He loves righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap and he layeth up the depths in the storehouse. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Psalms 33, 1 through 12. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have come into this house, gathered in this place to worship you. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift your name on high, Father God, because you are worthy of all of the praise. Father, we thank you for the opportunity. We thank you, Father God, for the strength in our lungs. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you have given us a place to worship, to call upon the name of the Lord. So, Father, we pray that your train will fill this temple today. Father, that as the people of God come, we pray that their mindsets, Lord God. Father, that the thoughts that we think are of you, Lord God. Father, your word says that the mind that is in Christ Jesus, let it be in us also. So, Father, we worship you today in spirit and in truth. Father, you are the great I am. You are everything that we need today, Lord God. Father, you are everything that we desire today, Lord God. And we praise you in this place. Father, we ask that we will be on one accord today, Lord. Father, in hymns and songs. And Father, as the man of God comes, we ask right now, Lord God, that he will decrease as you increase within him. Father, we ask that you will give him a word in due season for the people of God. Father, that we will leave this place changed. Father, that we will hear a word that will prick us, Lord God, that will catapult us, Father, into doing what it is that you have called us to do. Because, Father, you said that it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. So, Father, we reverence you in this place today, and we magnify your name today, Lord God. Father, we thank you right now that as we call upon you, Lord God, that you heal us, Father God, that you save us and you deliver us, Lord God. And, Father, we thank you right now as you glorify yourself in this place today, God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will continue to show yourself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are fully committed to you today, Lord God. Father, we thank you today, and we glorify you, and we magnify you. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Good morning, Faith Church. Good morning, Good morning Faith Church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you here today, whether you are in person or online. I want to welcome you in this uh, service today, and we hope that when you leave here, that you will have something that you can take from this service and take it and apply it to your lives. So I want you to look at your neighbor and welcome them to faith today.
Everybody say more and more. More and more. Somebody say more.
this is a good place for everybody to kind of rise to your feet you rise to your feet because you want to show reverence and you want to show awe and you want to show gratitude for the goodness of a God who loves you a God who serves a God who works a God who never fails a God who will never let you down a God who's always ready to say yes Woo! study on Wednesday night, you miss something. Normally you get Von Spencer. Every now and then you will get Brother Taurus and sometimes you will get Brother Steve. But on Wednesday night, we got the best Bible study teacher we've ever had. Felicia Davis. Come on, Felicia. Give Felicia. Thank you. God bless you, girl. You did a great job, Bible study. They call it Wednesday Night Live because it is off the chain. We want you to join in. It's on Zoom every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. So please join the next time if you didn't join this time. So thank you very much, Felicia. Also, I want to give a shout out to Rainus Williams. You know, the men have a prayer breakfast every uh, second Saturday, every second Saturday at 8 o'clock here at the church. I want to first give thanks to Rainus for an outstanding job. He gave tips on how to live a godly life. And then finally, you know, Rainus is a billionaire, and Rainus gave tips on how to invest in your future. Man, you missed that. You should have been there. Come next second Saturday, and you will not miss it. We'll have a good time as always. Lenny Malone was our chef yesterday. We had a great breakfast. Man, we had a good old time. It was good. So thanks to those, those gentlemen. And also Chris. Chris was the supervisor in the kitchen because he is our master chef. And we want to thank both of those guys. Great job, great job, great job. Um, our loving prayers go out to Leandretta Davis. I usually call her Nay, but I'm gonna be formal today and say Leandretta Davis. Wanna just plead the blood of Jesus over here that peace might fall on her. Uh, her father passed away this week and we are in prayer for them and we ask that uh, you be as well. Is, um, is Nolita in here? Well, her other half, Renus, is here so he can pass the word along. She was recognized as one of the ten finalists in uh, Business of the Year in Gardendale for her UPS program stories. Amen. God bless you. Man, we just kind of, I said it yesterday, we have got a ton of really gifted and godly men and women who give back to the Lord. They volunteer in the food pantry. They volunteer in other ministries. 
and we are just so grateful to be surrounded by and partnered with so many wonderful individuals because y'all make my life, you know, really, really blessed. Keep me in your prayers. We're going to get a little minor surgery tomorrow, um, but I will be out of pocket for just about 24 to 48 hours. I will not be able to make any critical decisions, so uh, you pray for Beverly because I might make some bad decisions. So just, just look out for us. Um, I think that's all that we have in the way of announcements. Get your coats in, your toys and whatever uh, to the food pantry because we're giving away, uh, having a big coat giveaway. And third Saturday in the month, which is coming up next sat this Saturday, um, the food pantry is open. If you don't need anything, come and get something for a neighbor. Uh, but make sure that you make allow this food to go not to waste and there will also be food available for those who want to pick up some things that are perishable uh, today after church. Whew, well, that's a lot of announcements. One final thing, if you're a visitor today, raise your hand. If you're a visitor, you're not a member of faith, thank you. We want to thank you very much for coming. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. If you did not get a connection card when you came in, please raise your hand. The ushers will bring one to you. Uh, this is just a a method of our keeping up with your visit because we'd love to speak up to you. If y'all will bring a connection card up here, up here uh, to the folks who are here, and let's when the offering comes around, this is you get you get the cool part. You get to just fill your card out and stick it in the basket. You, no one will say anything else. Just just make your con contribution of your information. You give that to us, and we'll keep you posted on all the things going on here at the church, and it'll be a blessing. So, ushers, if you'll bring some connection cards up, we'd appreciate that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you had uh, known on December 31st, you know, back New Year's Eve of, uh, of 2022, y'all remember that? Or some of you don't remember it because, see, you were so, you were so stoned out, you didn't know what was going on. You, some of you don't remember last year, so let me remind you. You made some resolutions. You made some promises. You made some commitments, and you did not keep them. And I want to tell you that your pastor is not here to judge. You probably, if you had not partied so hard, you would not have made some of those commitments. This time last year, kind of think back with me, and some of you it's hard to think back because you're getting a little bit foggy, uh, but think about it. This time last year, you were just getting used to getting out in public without a face mask. Y'all remember that? You remember that? And it looks like we're headed back in the face mask, but you had just gotten out of the face mask, so you you were pretty excited. I mean, you were getting a chance to hold hands with people. You were in a position to where you could hold hands with your, uh, all your loved ones. You could visit people in the hospital and all of these things. You'd go in the grocery store with, you know, out limitation on how many people were in there shopping. Uh, you had no idea on December 31st, 2022, that gasoline was about to shoot up to th over $3 a gallon. You had no idea that mortgage rates were about to climb from about 2.5% up to 7 or 8%, and in some cases, 9 or 10%. You didn't know then that before the year ended, before the year of 2023 ended, you'd be facing a major health crisis, that you would lose someone dear to you, that loneliness would become your closest friend. You didn't know that back then. It would have made you shudder. It would have made you tremble. It would have made you concerned about whether you were going to carry on because you don't know the future. You didn't know that you were going to lose your job. You didn't know that you were going to be outsourced. You did not know that you were going to lose your house. You were going to lose your car. You were going to lose some sleep. You were going to lose your children. You were going to lose some stuff, and you didn't know it. Because if you had known ahead of time, my God, you would not have celebrated New Year's Eve. This has been a tough year. Many of you in here could testify to the fact that it's been difficult. 
I don't know what you have faced. I don't know what you have encountered. I don't know what you have experienced, but I can make a statement that I do not fear contradiction on. You're still here. Some of you are not only still here, and some of you have been through all of those things, but you're still able to get your praise on. You're still able to lift up holy hands. You're still able to praise and thank God for your presence because you know the secret. It ain't over till it's over. You may have gone through, but understand God was too big a God and too good a God to leave you in the middle of it. He brought you through and he's bringing you through right now you didn't know you were going to face some of the worst depression that you'd ever faced in your life but it's not over yet you can still finish strong nay you can still finish strong benny you can still finish strong trubby you can still finish Strong, ask the University of Alabama, ask the Crimson Tide, can't you? When they lost to Texas, a lot of people said it's over. Oh, but there was somebody in the background said it ain't over till the fat lady sings. It ain't over until God says it's over. And if you're still breathing, it ain't over. I don't care how much debt you're in. I don't care how much addiction you face. I don't care how many people misunderstand you. It ain't over. You can still finish strong after all, through it all. You're still here. And you have 21 days to get it right. Pastor, what you mean? I mean, there are 21 days left in 2023. When we started this series a week ago, I told you that it takes 21 days to start a habit. 21 days is what you have in this year. You can finish strong. I don't care how much money you lost in the stock market. I don't care how many applications you've submitted and have been rejected. You can still finish strong. Because, see, a lot of things that you hoped for at the beginning of 2023, you did not accomplish. A lot of them. And some people get so distressed and so discouraged by this that they just give up, cave in, and quit. But ladies and gentlemen, say after me, I am not a quitter. I am not a quitter. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that we're not quitters. Thank you, Father, that you are our God and that you are able to see us through. I pray, Father, that the words in my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you in Christ Jesus. Amen. You want to finish strong, do you? Come on now, y'all don't sound like you're serious. It don't sound like you have a real commitment to this idea of finishing strong. So you want to finish strong? Let me see the hands of those who want to finish strong. All right. The first step in finishing strong is starting in the first place. And if you have not started yet, you got 21 days to start. You got 21 days to start, and you can finish strong because all the things that you went through this year were approved by God. And your responses help you to see what you were made of. A lot of people look at the turmoil that they go through and they get frustrated and they say, God doesn't love me. My wife doesn't love me. My husband doesn't love me. My children don't love me. My parents don't love me. Don't know how to love me. But let me tell you something. 2023 was a year of testing. But whenever there is a year of testing... There's always in the middle of the process a shifting. There's a shifting. There is a transition where we move from testing 
to remove, <laughs> we, we move to understanding. You understand that? Whenever you lose a job, a lot of things could be happening. Ask me. I lost a lot of jobs. <laughs> when you look at what happened, we have to understand this, that God was either shutting down something so that he could open something else up, or God was moving you to a place in his shifting process. Just thought about this. Y'all remember George Washington Carver? I remember him. Did all that stuff with the peanuts. Isn't he the one? Isn't he the one who did that? He saved Enterprise Alabama because they were trying to grow cotton. And there was a thing called a little insect called a boll weevil. And it got in the cotton and it messed it up. He said, y'all need to rotate what you do. You need to rotate what you have in order to get the soil a chance to rest and replenish. Sometimes we're doing good stuff, cotton, but sometimes the things that you're doing and doing well need to be swapped out and switched around. Vaughn, you've been a mechanic ever since. God gave you that opportunity. And what a great opportunity that was. Shumilia, you have been successful in a cleaning business. And you have gone through some turmoil that nobody, no average person without the power of God could have moved through. I want to ask you a question. <laughs> Are you better or worse because of what you've been through? <laughs> Many of us have our greatest achievements when we go low. Because when you go low, you realize how awesome up is. When you're always up, you don't ever appreciate where you are and what you have. You are continuously asking God for stuff. And you already got it. But when you go down, when you get low, you can look up and you can appreciate where God has taken you. See, God just had to let us kind of grow and expand. He has to allow us to replenish our prayer life, to replenish our study life, to replenish our faith. And I know what some of y'all are saying. My faith would be increased if I got everything I asked for. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Because, see, God has given you all things. And you know, what is he talking about? Everything that you need, God has already given you. When he was crucified, he said, it's finished. That means every prayer that I'm ever going to pray, God has already answered it. Everything is already given to you. And we don't have faith to accept it, to receive it. We keep thinking, well, I, I, if I got it, it sure don't feel like it. It sure doesn't look like I got it. If I got it, how come I'm poor? If I got it, how come I'm sick? You're not poor. Rainus is not really a billionaire, but Rainus is so focused on being a billionaire that it's as if he were already a billionaire. When you start thinking like you are praying, you're going to start acting the way you're praying. And when you start acting like you're praying, God is going to make it real in your life. Okay. I hope I can finish this. All things you went through this year, they were approved by God. Ladies and gentlemen, it's halftime. And some of us are behind. We're not 
We're not winning. We are being beaten by the enemy. Your coach has taken his team into the locker room. They don't go into the locker room mid-game to take a shower. They don't go in there to watch TV. They go into the locker room halftime to analyze what has been happening to them. They go in the locker room to analyze what the enemy has been doing and to, if necessary, change the game plan. Some of us don't like change. We don't like for things to get different. We want them to be the way they were in 1963. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now almost 2024 and you got to change. It's a different world. You can't just turn on your TV and adjust the rabbit ears. You've got to understand basic electronics to know how to operate your TV set. I'm so ignorant, my phone was messed up. I had touched one of the wrong buttons. I had to go into AT&T last night, and I had to ask them, would you please help me? I can't get on Zoom. I can't get on Starbucks. I can't get on anything. And the little girl laughed at me, and she looked at me, and she said, you, your VPN is blocking all of that. I don't even know what a VPN is, but whatever it is, she took it off. It's a new game. You've got to adjust to it. There are no more, you know, dial phones. There are no more, you know, full-service gas stations. You've got to deal with the present, anticipate the future, and you've got to learn from the past. Coach has adjusted your, your, your game strategy. When you lost that job, when you, you know, had that cut in pay, when you had that situation with your children, you had that situation with your family, God had to adjust the strategy. I know it's just 21 days left in the year, but let's call it halftime. And this is not the time to cry. This is the time to try. The new fourth quarter game plan is called the 3F strategy. I didn't write it. Paul did, and he wrote it to Timothy. 2 Timothy 4th chapter and the 7th verse. 2 Timothy 4th chapter and the 7th verse. Paul says to Timothy, I have fought the good fight. Okay. Okay. I have finished the race. All right. I have kept the faith. Cool. Very simple diagram of this scripture. Fight. Finish the fight. Start and finish the fight with faith. If you don't start the fight, you can't win the fight. If you don't have faith throughout the fight, you will lose the fight. Fight, finish the fight, start and finish the fight with faith. So how do you fight the stuff you're going through? The depression, the grief, the disappointment, the apparent defeat. How do you fight that? We got a secret weapon class. This is a weapon that we have not pulled out in the previous half of the game. This is a weapon that is called joy. Now, Pastor, wait, whoa. Now, I'm serious. You got a secret weapon. The enemy don't know nothing about this. He never seen you use this weapon before. Pastor, give me a switchblade or an AK-47 or 57 or something. Give me, give me something I can use. Give me something I can relate to. Joy. More powerful than a powerful locomotive. Faster than a speeding bullet. Joy. But the problem with some of us is we have not been issued 
our secret weapon. Because, see, joy is a fruit of the what? Of the Spirit. And if you don't have the Spirit, you can't have joy. You can have happiness, but happiness is not a weapon. Happiness in some kind is a, is a drug. It's an opioid. But joy, you can't get from a dealer. Joy is an inside job. Joy comes from within, not from without. So when you get this weapon and learn how to use it, you cannot be beaten by the enemy. I keep my wife laughing all the time. And you know what? She loves me. She also isn't here. Joy is something you ought to allow to come into your house. Find a reason to have joy and to laugh and to smile and to just let joy rise up within you. But joy, some people can't have because it has not been issued to them. They do not have the Spirit. Therefore, they do not have the fruit of the Spirit. And if they do not have the fruit of the Spirit, they cannot have joy. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Come back and look at it more, for, more fully. But it says, Do not grieve because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Do you get that? When you commiserate all the problems that you're going through, all the disappointments that you're facing, all the grief that you're experiencing, he said, do not grieve. He said, don't grieve, don't, don't cry, don't, don't worry, don't, don't be frustrated, don't be discouraged. He said, don't do that. He says, what I want you to do is understand that the joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. If you're weak, joy is your strength. But it's not just any old joy. It's the joy of the Lord. You can't get it from sex. You can't get it from money. You can't get it from drug. You can't get it from anybody but God. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not going to fight, you don't really need any strength. If you're not going to put up a fight, you don't need strength. You do not need it. It don't take much strength to sit down on the couch and push the remote. It does not take a lot of energy to watch TV. You don't need any strength if all you're going to do is listen to the radio or these days listen to Spotify. You're not going to need any strength. But if you're like me, you're like a pastor, you mix it up all day long with the enemy because God is constantly trying to give you blessing. The enemy is constantly trying to take it away. God gives you the strength to get your joy back, to get your blessings back by giving you his joy. Now, here's the cool thing about joy. The devil is not familiar with it because what it does is it breaks the back and the will of your enemy. You ever had a child who made you so mad you didn't know what to do when you were spanking them? And they started laughing at you. You can't whoop a child that laughing at you. I mean, you get to you get to beating that little bottom, and you look at them. They just <laughs> when we begin to treat the enemy that way, every time he throws a punch, <laughs> it ain't you laughing. It's the joy of the Lord rising up in you laughing. And when you can do that, then God can do something powerful in your life. <laughs> Let's go back to where we were last week. Let's return to the prophet Haggai. And he was preaching to Israel about building God's house ahead of their own. Y'all remember that? He explained to them that they should put the house of God ahead of their own houses ahead of their own houses. He says, y'all living there and you're fine. 
you know, beautiful paneled houses is what he called them. And then he told them, God's house is in ruin. You're taking care of you, but you're not taking care of God's house. Then, I didn't share this verse with you. Then he told them to consider their ways. Consider your ways. Don't get me wrong. God didn't take your loved one. God didn't take your job. But he did use those things to teach you and me how to react to them. Can I use, can, can I mess with you now? So many people, when they lose a relative, a father, a mother, they ain't coming to church Sunday. They ain't singing in the choir. But you see, that's the joy of the Lord. That's the joy of the Lord, and the enemy can't touch that. I mean, MC Hammer can't touch this. You cannot touch it because the joy, I ain't messing with nay. I ain't, I'm through messing with her because she has demonstrated she got the joy of the Lord. I am not messing with her. Then, hey, guy, after he told him that, he said, consider your ways. Consider how you're playing the game. Now, I'm going to be closing in a minute. But consider how you're playing the game. How are you playing the game? Come to church once a quarter, special holidays, funerals, funerals. Men's Day, Women's Day. Oh, we don't have those. Um, might come to the uh, fall festival. But other than that, you ain't coming. You tell everybody, I'm a, I'm a tither. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm a tither. I give every Sunday. I give 10% of all I have. 10%. If you and I give 10% of all we have, everybody in here is below the poverty level. Somebody ain't telling the truth. <laughs> Somebody is not telling the truth. But, but it does not hurt the church of God. It hurts you. It hurts me. When we do not open the door to put God first. I'm going to talk to you next week about Cain and Abel and why God didn't accept one of those offerings. But I want to just share with you we we just not, we ain't, we ain't doing it all right. And that's how come Haggai said, consider your ways. And then think back on how hard you say this year has been. Consider your ways. Consider your reactions to the things that have happened to you in life. Don't sit back and say, God did that to me. Don't even sit back and say, the devil did that to me. We live in a world that is saturated with evil. We live in a world that is saturated with hate. We live in a world that is saturated with this stuff. And if you live in this world, you know, I have read somewhere that man born of woman is of a few days. And those days are full of what? Trouble. They're full of trouble. So don't be surprised when trouble comes your way. You don't have any control over the trouble, but you do have every control over your response to the trouble. You see, you're in charge of your response to the trouble, the response to the difficulty. He said, consider your ways. God uses those events 
to check you out. Hey, guy, first chapter, first chapter beginning at the ninth verse, and then I'm going to back up to the seventh, but start with the ninth verse. You expect it much. You remember? New Year's Eve last year, you remember that? New Year's Eve 2022, you expect it much. You thought it was going to be awesome. Football, every football team at the beginning of the year have big pep rally starting the season. We're going to be number one. Well, maybe we're going to be number two. <laughs> well, maybe we'll make a bowl. Maybe we won't lose our coach. I mean, things didn't turn out the way you planned at the pep rally. You didn't beat the teams you thought you were going to beat. You expected much. You got married. You thought it was going to be honeymoon every day. It ain't going to be honeymoon every day. It's going to be some days when you wish you was on the moon, but it's not going to be a honeymoon every day. But see, it turned out to be little. You expected much, but you didn't get much. Little boy. Christmas time. Santa Claus, here's my list. Ten things. Wake up and all he got is a pair of skates. And some people like this say, What's, what are skates? <laughs> That's what every child in my age group got every year was a pair of skates. Look at the rest of the verse. What you brought home, I blew away. Oh, my God. What an indictment on God. He said, the stuff you brought home, that bonus, that income tax return, the stuff you brought home, I blew it away. That beautiful girl, that beautiful future that you hoped for, he said, I blew it away. And then God asked the question through Haggai, why? Why did I blow it away? Declares the Lord Almighty, here's the reason. Because of my house, which remains in ruin. Your focus has been on you, yourself, and yours. God says, until you get your focus, Felicia, off of the stuff and onto the stuff giver, <laughs> it's going to be blown away. Therefore, because of you, I blew it away, but because of you, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth and all of its crops. You see that? Verse 11. I called for a drought. I did. God, I did that. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces, on people and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. You got, you work in three jobs. You ain't bringing in no more money. You got a wife and two women. <laughs> and you ain't no more fulfilled. I call for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the olive oil, and on all the labor of your hands. That's what God said. Go back up to verse 7. This is what the Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways, to your responses, to your dealings with the consequences. <laughs> this is what I love. Then he, at the top of the scripture that I gave you, verse 8, he says, now go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house. Pastor, what's he talking about? 
God is talking about the fact that you live in a sin-sick world. Everybody isn't going to like you. Everybody isn't going to praise you. And everything you do is not going to produce. Understand that. Understand that that is the nature of a sin-sick world. But God says when you take the focus off of what you can do, what you can produce, understand that what you produce, I can destroy. He says, take your eyes off of that and put your attention on me. Put, there's a, there's a saying that I've heard somewhere, and I don't even know where. I'm not copyright stealing. I'm just telling it like it is. We should give lavishly. Amen? That's what we ought to do to the Lord, to the kingdom. Now, pastor's going to close after this. Steve, y'all, come on up, man. We're finna, we finna shut it down. I just want to leave you with a thought. And this thought goes back to Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Paul says, I thank God every time I remember you. And I, I do. I thank God every time I remember all of y'all. In all my prayers... And this is the truth. Even last night, I stepped out on my back deck and I looked up into a cloudy, dark sky. And I prayed for you. And my prayer for you, that I pray with joy, is that God would fill you with his joy. I can't control what comes into your life. I can't control your grief and your disappointments. But I pray that God would raise this scripture up in your life because of your partnership, the partnership that you and I have in this ministry, in this community in this city, in this state. Because of your partnership in the gospel, from the first day, some of you have been a part of this ministry from the day that it started. Some of you have been a part of this ministry from the day that we started in Midfield. Being confident of this, that he, as a capital H, God, who began a good work in you, you, Faith Church, me, Faith Church, being confident of this, that he, capital H, God, who began a good work in you, he will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. You ought to be shouting now. Because, see, I don't care what you're going through, Trevor. Chris, I don't care what you're going through. I do not care what you're going through, and I don't know what you're going through. But he who started a good work in you, he will be faithful to complete it. Oh, but it seems like I'm not ahead of where my friends are. It seems like I'm not as good as I want to be. I'm not where I'd like to be in life. It ain't over yet. He who started a good work in you is faithful to complete it. If you have not completed your task, you ought to be praising God because it ain't over yet. If you have not won one soul to Christ, this is your day to get one. And if that's all God assigns you to, you make sure you get that one. It is not the church's response. It's your responsibility. It's your assignment. It's your charge. Old people used to sing this song, a charge to keep our hand, a God to glorify. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you've got a charge to keep. And you need to glorify the name of Jesus. Paul told Timothy, and I tell you, I have fought. I fought a good fight. Beverly and I have done without on many occasions in order that God's people might have something. Fought a good fight. Remember, there are three F's. You can't just fight. You've got to finish the fight. Some people say, Pastor, when are you going to retire? I'm going to retire when I'm finished. I'm not finished yet. I don't want to die and look good. I want to be so worn out. I want to be so messed up that ain't no more use in me. Paul said, I poured myself out like a drink offering. And when the cup is empty, through it all, I kept the faith. Fight. Fight to the finish. And through it all, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. When you are lonely, keep the faith. When you are broke, keep the faith. When you're sick, keep the faith. When you don't see a way out, keep the faith. When you want to give up, when you're too tired to stand, keep the faith. When everybody misunderstands and accuses you, keep the faith. When they say you can't make it, keep the faith. Fight, finish, and keep the faith and you will finish strong. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful, Father, for you. And we're thankful, Father, for what you have done in our lives. And we ask you now, Father, to bless those who are under the sound of my voice. And Father, if there's one who has heard the word and wishes to respond to it, pray that you will move on their hearts. And do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the doors of the church are open. If there's anyone who desires to unite with the church, we invite you to come. We're going to have prayer counselors across the front of the church. The altar is open to you, and we invite you to come. Now, if you are really feeling like something fluttering down in the middle of your heart and you just don't know what it is, let me tell you something. It ain't gas. It's not acid reflux. It's the Holy Spirit trying to get you up off your behind, off of your good intentions, and to give your life to Jesus Christ. I don't care if you join Faith Church or whether you join a church down the street, but let this be the day that you make a decision to believe in Jesus Christ. The doors are open. The invitation is now extended, and we invite you to come. If you would like to join the church, please step forward. We would love to have you be a part of Faith Church and the ministry here. Will you come? This is a good time to just come to the altar and give thanks. There's nothing else that you want to ask God for. You're well. You don't need healing. You have all the money you need. You don't have any financial burdens. You don't have anything that you're feeling guilty about. That's fine. Just come to the altar and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let your, let your petitions be known to God. Let it be known. I'm going to tell you something. God answers the prayers of the righteous. And God answers prayer that is fervent. You know what fervent prayer is? It's when you just get down and you just get from your gut and you just say, God, if you don't help me, there's nobody else who can. 
There's no counselor. There's no banker. There is nobody who can help me but you, Jesus. And when you call on him with that kind of fervency, you get action out of heaven. Amen. Amen. Something happens. Yeah, when I call you. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. This is a good time to just pray and meditate right where you are. Pastor's going to take his seat. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that the doors are still open. As a matter of fact, I'm going to sit down front. If you want to give your life to Christ, just slip on up beside your pastor. And we'll lead you to Christ. We'll tell you the words. We'll pray over you. And we'll get you there. Amen. Jesus. You want to get in trouble today? Go into a public setting 
into a civic club, into a secular meeting, and announce the name of Jesus. They'll let you say God. They'll let you say Holy One. But man, you say Jesus. Because see, the enemy knows the power in that name. Jesus. Come on, you try it. Jesus. 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 Ushers, you go ahead and come forward. Receive this offering today. And as you give, if you're, if you're a visitor, take that connection card and put it in the basket because we really would like to acknowledge your visit, reach out to you, and answer any questions that you may have about the church or the ministry. But give unreluctantly because God loves a cheerful giver. And he is faithful. If we give unreluctant to God sacrificially, something amazing happens. Jesus even said, try me, test me, and see won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you can't even hold. And I look around this church and I know that we've been praying and we've been giving and I look at the men and women that God has sent. God sent us a Vaughn. God sent us a Derek and Shamilia. God sent us a Tim. God sent us all of these men and women. God sent us a Stephen. God sent us a Fred. God sent us. Our prayers are answered. Now it's our move. Now it's our move. Brother Derek whispered over there and said, this is the kind of ministry, this is the kind of preaching that'll anchor the neighborhood, get the neighborhood. You know what? God has a plan for this community and you're a part of the plan. And I want you to rise up to the occasion. I want you to rise to the occasion whether you're a young person or whether you're a senior. Amen? Father, we are so grateful for the gifts that you have gathered together and Father, we give them back to you. The church is a pipeline. Nobody gives to the church. We give through the church. And we pray, Father, that you would allow this giving to just be multiplied toward the work of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. hosting a winter coat and shoe drive so if you we would like your new or gently used coats and sneakers for our neighbors in need all sizes for kids as well as adults are uh, requested and the goal is to have at least 500 items uh, we'd like to thank everyone who participated in the toy drive um, that ended on yesterday we appreciate all of uh, there will be a Living Nativity Social with Faith, Ch Faith Church and Mountain Brook Baptist Church that will be held on Wednesday, December the 20th at 5.30 p.m. at 
Hudson Hall at Mountain Brook Baptist Church. Now, last year was my first time attending this event, and when I tell you it is a sight to see, um, so if you really want to see um, the true living nativity, you should be a part. The social was wonderful. We had an awesome time with Mountain Brook Baptist Church members who also uh, come and assist us with the lead, but it was a wonderful time. So um, they have live animals and everything, so it's, it's, it's great. So if you would like to be a part of that, please RSVP using the Mountain Brook Baptist Church link that is in Realm or located on Disney. Um, the next Lee Food Pantry is um, will be held on Saturday, December the 16th. Um, and please, uh, we're asking you to wear your favorite Christmas attire. Our Christmas production will be held on next Sunday, so we are looking forward to uh, what our children have in store for us. And as well, December the 31st is Youth Serve Sunday. So thank you, everyone, and have a great week. We want to be deeply rooted in the Word of God. Um, one of our sweet and enthusiastic about learning members asked, do we have a plan for Bible study, how to study the Bible? And I, I shared a link that connected people to a very extensive Bible study structure. I found something that is a little bit simpler. It's a one page and um, it answers the question about how to study the Bible, steps one through five, I think it is. And I'm gonna leave several copies up here. Just grab the sheet and if it's something that is beneficial to, uh, to you. Don't forget the 21 day challenge. It was the 29 day challenge, now it's the 21 day challenge. Nine things that we challenge you to do here at First Faith Church toward the end of the year. I encourage you to take the challenge and to identify those nine items. If you don't know what they are, go to um, one of our uh, social media pieces and you will see what the challenges are. And they're real simple. They're nine things that you can make a habit of doing between now and the end of the year, all right? God bless you. We want to thank all of you who are visitors. We want to thank our regular members. We want to thank those who are watching online. God bless you. AV, forgive me for standing down here. I know I didn't put that in the notes, but uh, somebody else is going to close us out, and that somebody else is Brother Stephen Myers, and we're going to ask Stephen to come now to close us out with uh, benediction, closing prayer, and any words that uh, may be had. Didn't the praise team knock your socks off today. Amen. Come on, let's get a Lord of hands back for prayer. All right, everybody, could you please stand for me, please, as we walk our way out? Hallelujah. Lift your hands in this place and say, Lord, Lord, Lord we have heard the word. We have heard the word. We will walk the word. We will walk the word. We will move in the word. We will move in the word. And we will grow in the word. We will grow in the word. Amen. Amen. Amen.